Another important thing about induction is that without a power supply, induction always damps motion. So let's think about that moving slider like we had last time. I won't draw it quite as nice, but we have a uniform B field into the board. And we'll just draw it as wires this time, like this, and acknowledge that it has some resistance like that. And we'll imagine that this is the x-axis. And the slider can sit right there, like that, just like before. Some resistance R. So now we're going to do a kinematics problem. We're going to give it an initial the slider and initial v naught. And see what happens. I probably could have just said that. All right, so the slider is given v naught that way. And by see what happens means let's solve for the velocity as a function of time. Will it slow down? Will it speed up? Will it stay constant? Will it explode? Who knows what it will do? So in this case, we would probably want to think about Faraday's law of induction. EMF is minus d phi b dt. And it's just like last time. It ends up being minus blv. What I didn't say last time is that we're assuming the area vector is pointing into the board. And then in that way, it makes sense that the area vector is down, is into the board, the B field is into the board, so it has a positive flux. And as we pull, as this moves this way, we have an increasing positive flux. Therefore, the EMF has to come out negative. This is positive. Um, this thing uh, will be negative. And that's why we know that the current goes this way. A positive current would go this way, our thumb along A, positive would go that way. We know we worked out and thought about uh, the QV cross B force. We know that the current is going to go this way, which means this bar now has a current in it going that way. So when you give it initial velocity, current flows, just like we talked about last time. The current, uh, I, is the EMF over R. So it's basically minus B L V over R. So there's our current. Now, let's think about the force on the bar. Hmm. So if we're going to do kinematics, something has to happen other than just this thing moving. It will experience a force because now it's carrying a current and it's in a magnetic field. There is an I L cross B force. So I is this way, L is also this way. If L is the length of the slider, so we can point out that this is L, just like it was a little L before, now it's a big L, grew up. Uh, it's going to be I, L is this way, cross B is that way. It's going to feel a force this way. Right. It is FB. It will feel a force that way. And you might think we already used that force. We used that force to get the induction. And actually, no, we didn't. Okay, so we, when we thought about the induction, we said the charges, the free charges in the metal are moving this way. And we said that V cross B caused the polarization, which ends up causing induction. Now we have something different, not a velocity this way. We have a velocity of charge carriers if they're electrons this way and if they're positive that way. So it's actually at 90 degrees to that other velocity we thought about. It's actually the electrons are actually kind of moving that way. Right? So now that the current makes them move this way, we apply uh, the QV cross B force again, in this case an ILB version of it, and we say, yeah, actually when you make it move that way, there's more velocity, and now it feels a force moving back, which is equal to ILB. Since everything's at 90 degrees, we just worry about magnitudes. Force on bar is ILB. Now the current is negative, 
but when we go plugging it in here, that will make it negative. Okay, so you know that the force is in the negative x direction. It should come out negative, but it will. Because this negative value goes in here, the force will come out negative. So that part's okay. Okay, so we have something with initial velocity this way and a force dragging it back that way that depends on its velocity. Oh, that's going to make a mess. Let's do kinematics. Some of the forces equals ma. So the only force is this ILB force. Let's go ahead and plug in the current into ILB, and it becomes negative BLV over R times LB. So the LBs are squared, and I've gone and used a little L, so the big L, because I was thinking of the last board. So the Bs and the Ls are squared, so it ends up that the force is um, minus B squared L squared L squared V over R, minus B squared L squared V over R. And that is the instantaneous velocity, not just the initial velocity. Here, as this velocity changes, if it changes due to the kinematics, this will still be the current. That's still, that's velocity as a function of time. So we have minus BLV over R equals M, and what is A? A is dv dt. Okay. Okay, so now if we solve for, well, we'll try to simplify it. We can solve for dv dt equals, we can bring the m over here, minus b squared l squared over m r v. And you may recognize that as exponential decay. So that's a differential equation. You can't solve it by integration. You can't just integrate this. You could integrate this side with respect to time and get v as a function of time, but you can't integrate that with respect to time because that's the function you're looking for. This is why differential equations are hard. But if you recognize that as exponential decay, then you know that what you're going to get is that v as a function of time is v naught, and then it's going to decay as e to the minus b squared l squared over mrt. So what this means is if we give this thing an initial kick, it'll slow down to zero. At time equals zero, e to the zero is one, it'll go at v naught, but then it'll exponentially decay and that initial velocity will be lost. Where's it going? Uh, physically, it's being lost as heat in the resistor. Now, that's the answer. We solved the problem. If you didn't like this, if you want to do that integral, I'm gonna do that integral now. If you like that, just stop the video. But just in case, I wanna catch everybody no matter what their math background is. This is one of the few differential equations like this that you can actually do. So it's so exciting, I actually want to do it. So all you got to do in this case is get the v's on one side and the t's on the other. So you say dv over v, brought that v under, take the t to the other side, minus b squared l squared over mr t, dt. Right? And now integrate both sides. And you got to think about your problem. We're trying to go from v naught to some v at time t, and v naught happened at zero, and we're trying to get the v at some time t. Okay? So the integral of dv over v, the integral of dx over x, is the natural log of x, or in this case v, evaluated v naught to v. And the integral of that constant times dt is just that constant times t, minus v squared l squared over m r t evaluated from zero to t. All right, so if you plug these in, this is natural log of v minus natural log of v naught. The natural logs, when you subtract them, it's the, really the ratio. So this is the natural log of v over v naught. And this is you plug in t, then you plug in zero. It's just minus b squared l squared over m r t. And then the thing that you like is under the log, and you don't want that to happen, so you exponentiate both sides. So e to the log of something is the something. V, I'm supposed to be saying ln, I forgot, we talked about that. V over V naught equals e to the minus B squared L squared over M R T, and then multiply the V naught, and you get V as a function of time. I'll write it as a function of time now. Equals V naught e to the minus B squared L squared over M R T. If you take a full e &M class with circuits, you do derivations like that all the time in circuits and understanding circuit behavior. So being able to do those little integrals and similar ones is pretty important in a class like this that would have circuits in it.